On Friday, I had to kick an EMT out of my house. I had to actually say, get the fuck out of my house. And I'm going to tell you why. But it's okay, because the end worked out. We got a new EMT, and everything went well. Some of you may know, my husband is struggling with a rare disease called amyloidosis. He is undergoing chemo for this disease. While it is not cancer, it is very similar to cancer. It is treated like cancer. Unfortunately, when you are on chemo, your immune system is down and you can get weird, strange infections. And my husband did in a very delicate area. Anyway, he couldn't walk. I had to call an ambulance per his oncologist. Now, he is receiving treatment at a hospital on Long Island called NYU Langone which is not that far from my house, but is definitely further than the closest hospital. So I know that when you call an ambulance, they have to, if it's a life-threatening emergency, they have to take you to the closest trauma center. But they also have it written that you must take the patient to the closest, most appropriate hospital. Understand that? Closest, most appropriate. In my husband's case, as he is receiving chemo, the closest, most appropriate place would be the hospital that his oncologist is at because this is a chemo complication. And he asked that my husband be brought to that hospital. This paramedic came barreling into my house and you could tell right away she wanted a power struggle. She said, I can't take you there. I could take you to NUMC which is the closest trauma hospital, or I can take you to a hospital that's further away. She didn't use those words. And it may have taken less time to get to the one that was further away just because of the time of day, but it wasn't the closest appropriate hospital. So I explained to her, and I was nice to her in the beginning. Anywho, she didn't want to do it. She was giving me such a hard time. And in the middle of that, the social worker from the cancer center called to find out what was going on and to see if my husband was on his way. So I told her what was going on. She was livid. Now, our public ambulance system is run, is contracted out to private ambulance companies. It's a little strange how it works here. So you call 911, but essentially a private company comes to you. I don't know. So the social worker gets the 911 operator on the phone to send a different private company from the hospital that works out of the hospital that we needed my husband to go to. She said, can you arrange that? And they said, yeah, no problem. I don't know why this EMT person won't just bring him here. This is the closest, most appropriate hospital. People from her town go here all the time on ambulance. As I'm talking to this person, this woman, the EMT in my house is screaming in the background, she can't do anything for you. Like trying to convince the operator on the phone that she's not allowed to help me, that she's not allowed to override what this paramedic or EMT is saying. She was so dead set that my husband should not go to the pro appropriate hospital that she was like screaming at the operator on the phone. The operator's like, what is wrong with this woman? We're all sitting there talking about this woman. Now this woman's present in my house. And I said, I don't know, she's crazy. So then she starts asking my husband questions. And I said, don't ask him another question. Don't answer another question to my husband. She said, can he speak for himself? I said, he can, but he's not going to. She turns to the cop. She goes, you see, I'm not refusing care. And they go, oh, you're not refusing care. We see. So I turned to the cops. Let me back up. The operator says, don't worry, we'll be there within 30 minutes. It's a non-emergency, so it'll, it could take us as much as 30 minutes. We're not going to lights and siren it. And I said, no problem. I looked up at her and I said, you are no longer needed because they're going to send somebody within 30 minutes. Have a nice day. She said, they're not going to be able to take you there either. I said, that's exactly why they're coming here. They're coming here from there to come get my husband and take him there. And she's still arguing. And the social worker is like still on the phone, like, what is going on here? So finally, I look at the EMT and I say, you know what? Get the fuck out of my house. And she looks at me all indignant. And I said, you heard me. Get the fuck out of my house. Well, you need to sign off that you're refusing treatment. Fine, fine. And then the cop says, you know, she's just doing her job. And I said, you know what? My father was a cop too. And I know for a fact, I know what the policy is. Closest appropriate hospital. And in this case, this is the closest appropriate hospital. That's fine. If you guys don't want to be bothered, don't be bothered. Just leave my house. So the cop says, are you saying I'm not doing my job? So I said, I'm saying you're not doing your job as well as my father did his job. <laughs> anyway. I am the most pro-cop person you'll ever meet. My father was a cop. I have uncles, cousins, everyone in my family. I know a lot of cops. I have a lot of friends that are cops. I love cops. I didn't love these cops. Anyway, the person that came, she also volunteers at the private company that this woman, the original EMT that I kicked out of my house came from. And when I told her the story and she'd actually heard it from dispatch, they were all horrified. 
So apparently a whole bunch of people are reporting this woman. But the craziest thing happened. I went to Starbucks with my friend yesterday and this EMT, the second one that helped us was there. And I was like, oh my God. So I got to thank her for everything she did for my husband. And she said, my supervisor's here. I was telling him the story and he had wanted to talk to you. She calls him over and I got to talk to the supervisor right then and there. He was so apologetic. He said, you were a hundred percent right. And she was a hundred percent wrong. That was the closest appropriate hospital. And when I tell you there'll be disciplinary action, there will be disciplinary action. Actually, he said action. He didn't say disciplinary. He said action. There would be action taken. In my head, that equals disciplinary action. I could be wrong, but at least I know she's going to be called out on it. And that's all that matters. Because if you don't want to do your job correctly, don't do your job. There was no trauma situation. Now, if my husband had been short of breath or having chest pains, by all means, he would have needed to go to the closest trauma center. But since that was not the case, what he needed was to go to the closest, most appropriate hospital for him. Just thought I'd share that story. Always fight for yourself. Always advocate.